Welcome weirdos, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe. Today I figure that I will do something that I did in the past and do it again. And that is show you the textbooks that I had to get for this semester because I am back in school <laughs> and I actually had to buy textbooks this semester, which made me slightly salty, especially because some of them were cheap and it is the fourth week right now of classes. So I'm not really going in many particular order. I think I'm going to talk about my e-textbook first because that is the one that I'm thinking about and I'm afraid I'm going to forget it if I don't mention it first. So this is called Operating Systems Concepts by Abram Silberstance. I really like the cover. I like the D-Regs on it. I don't really fully understand how it connects to operating systems yet, but <laughs> that's where we're at. I at least find it amusing. So the reason I don't have like an, an actual copy of this and I only have like a PDF version is because you could only get it PDF, which was nice because that made it cheaper, uh, but not nice for me as someone who likes to have the actual book. <sighs> it's just very frustrating to me when I can't get that. You could get like a loose leaf, a companion thing, but that did not include all of the text and I was really frustrated. So this book we are actually using in this class. The class is operating systems and it's kind of kicking my butt. Um, but like in a good way, like I'm liking what, what we're doing, but the stuff we're doing, not to get too technical, if any of you guys know, we're working with kernels right now and that stuff's terrifying because if you fuck up a kernel, you fuck up your computer. So there's always like a like just lots of tension going into every single like assignment we have to do for this class because we're all tinkering with the kernels and I'm like I'm going to explode my computer it's found it's fine um we're working on it so <laughs> I feel like I'm learning a lot of like really technical knowledge that I'm not really going to use in the future because unless I teach operating systems which I don't know if I'll do one day it is kind of cool because I think it makes me more marketable in terms of computer science and looking for my last round of jobs I will say though that if I did not have my dad <laughs> to help me in this class I would be screwed so um, the reason I say like this is a good purchase for me to make is because our tests we have like quizzes and tests they are exclusively on the chapter material and the chapter doesn't take too long to read it usually takes about a couple of hours so I usually like start reading it in the morning and then take the test like right after I read it it's good on that front it's not really helping me do any of my homeworks or understand what's going on in lecture but it is very vital to have this textbook in order to succeed on the tests and quizzes and things so yeah we've only read two chapters out of this and I don't know how many were going to get to because we're going slower than I think the professor anticipated us going. The next book that I'm going to show you is it's Archaeology by Colin Renfew and Paul Bond and I'm actually really enjoying this. I'm finding this very very informative. This is a book that again I do have to read for my class and we have quizzes that hinge around the chapters so if you do not read the chapter kind of fucked. I need to do the test at some point. I'm probably going to do that like this weekend or something. Uh, yeah, that'll be my goal. Get that done over the weekend. This is for my intro to archaeology class. So, which in that class I'm finding very enjoyable. Shout out to my professor. I will not name her name, but she is doing a freaking phenomenal job transitioning to online. She's probably doing the best out of all my professors. And I just really want to laud her accomplishments because I've been dealing with professors who are having lots of communication issues and I don't like that and I think she's doing a really good job trying to utilize Zoom and kind of doing this like weird flipped classroom where she records lecture videos that are not 10 million hours long. Personally I would rec I like it when teachers record lectures of what we're supposed to be learning and make them like 20 to 30 minutes and I really like how we actually only have to attend our zoom meetings one day a week this one wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be I got it used from Amazon this next book and the book following will be from the same class um, this next book is designs for the plural verse radical independence autonomy and the making of worlds by or Arturo Escobar I have not read this yet we're not gonna be reading this until way down like the last two weeks of class so I just figured I would get it because I just like having it like at the beginning when I'm thinking about purchasing textbooks and I also don't want to be in panic mode 
a couple months from now where I'm just like, fuck, I don't have this book and I don't know what to do. Just one thing about this book that makes me laugh. So look at this. This looks like quite normal, right? So watch as I turn. Yep, that's very annoying. <laughs> um, luckily that issue is not like continued within the actual book. So this I had to get for my applied anthropology class. And I think we're gonna use it in like the very last week where we just kind of go over how we would rebuild and reconstruct the world kind of as like a fun thing to do for the last week of class. We're gonna have to read this whole boy. So I'm gonna have to get my university to get me a PDF of it because there are no audiobooks of this, which is slightly unfortunate. Piggybacking off of this one, we also have for the same class, Mountains Beyond Mountains by Tracy Kid Kidner. It's a quest of Dr. Paul Farmer, a man who would cure the world. Paul Farmer is an anthropologist. He works in the specific field of applied anthropology. I'm not really sure what his work specifically goes on. I think his work revolves a lot about like infectious diseases and more of the healthcare side of applied anthropology, which is really interesting. And this isn't like a traditional textbook. This is like a normal, like general reading print book. But what I really like about this professor in this class is, but well, yeah, this is going to focus a lot on farmer's research. He does a really good job of not having like a standard textbook that we have to use for a class. He really recognizes that some textbooks can get ridiculously pricey. So he'll either scan parts of books that he wants or will choose books that are really cheap and easily affordable for the students, which I really like. More professors should do that. I do like that he doesn't feel the need to be constrained by a single text. He pulls from all sorts of different texts in order to make up the reading that we have to do for this class. So I think that's all I'm gonna talk about this book and move on to the next one. <laughs> the next book is Practical Strategies for Technical Communication, A Brief Guide by Mark Mark Hill and Stuart Saber. This is for my technical writing class that I absolutely hate. This this class is also doing a really good job of being online, but that's just because technical writing particularly, lots of it is offered online. So most of the teachers in technical writing are really used to teaching online, whereas most of my other professors are not. By God, you would be really surprised at who are the worst ones. I'll get into it later. I was reading from this like very diligently. I just have realized that in order for me to accomplish the assignments that I have to do on a weekly basis, I don't need to read the book. I try to like refer to the book, but when we were assigned a chapter, all reading about, all about reading about grammar and the mistakes in grammar that was like 60 pages long, I was like, no, 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 fuck this. I'm not reading. And do you want to know what our assignment was? Our assignment was we had to take one of the sentences that we had written in the past for a past assignment. Granted, we'd only done like two assignments. Rewrite it so it's better um, grammatically. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> I do not need to read 60 pages. Might have been more like 50 pages in order to do that assignment. We'll see if going down the road in the future, if I will continuously need to be reading this, but I did get it. And again, I got it used like from Amazon because and that's all I really want to say about this book in my technical writing class. I don't really have much else to say about it. It's fairly boring. So next is probably my biggest textbook. Okay, I'm pulling it up. It is Artificial Intelligence, a Modern, modern Approach by Stuart Russell and Peter Norving. I do like my textbook's hardcover. And also, you have Ada Lovelace right there. I just felt so validated. It's pretty awesome. Oh, you also have Alan Turing here um, and some other, but those two people are really fundamental to the field of computer science and they're often neglected in history because of their status in underprivileged groups. So Ada Lovelace is obviously a woman and a woman who lived in early 1800s. So she was often swept aside and her work was not rec recognized for several decades. And then we also have Alan Turing, who's a gay man and was actually castrated in living in the early 1900s. They both did phenomenal work that helped 
create and change the field of computer science and both of them were not recognized till after they were dead. It just feels really cool that now we're paying homage and respect to those two people but you'd be surprised by people who do not know those two names in computer science especially if they're super into computer science. It's a little bit disturbing in my opinion. So this textbook I kind of view as a huge freaking waste of money and this is one of my classes that I'm not enjoying the way it's run online because the professor just wakes us all up in the morning and we have to just sit there and listen to him drone and drone and drone all about search algorithms because it's all we've been doing so far and he's just not very good at keeping us up to date about when we have things what readings we need to be doing and he hasn't really been assigning readings and the tests he's been asking us to do and the quizzes we've had haven't really touched on the readings. I mean it does but it also doesn't and you could also find the stuff for the tests and the quizzes online so you don't necessarily need this textbook and that's what I find really frustrating about classes kind of like that where they just don't really tell you whether or not you need the textbook or they tell you you do but then you don't and you wind up dropping over a hundred dollars on a textbook that you never even needed in the first place and it's really really fucking irritating <laughs> um and people wonder why college students are broke I've opened this up a couple of times to reference search algorithms and I did try to read the one entire chapter and I decided fuck this no way. So yeah I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Um, also this is the very latest version of the textbook that I don't even think the professor has yet. So ugh. the whole thing in this class is a shit show but not as much as a shit show as this next class I'm going to talk about. So I don't have any more books to show you but since we're on talking about classes and textbooks I figured I would talk about my computer networks class. Holy fucking Jesus. So this is a required class that everyone who is a computer science major has to take in order to graduate. So we get to the week before classes start and you know throughout the week I've been hearing from my professors you know saying like hey like I'm professor blah 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 I'm gonna be teaching this blah 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 here's some of the expectations for the class sometimes the professors even open up the course early it's also the week before classes so it's kind of like we're kind of expecting to be seeing that and also it's the first real big semester that everyone is coming back to the university so it makes sense why lots of the teachers are choosing to be very proactive in their communication practices from computer networks radio silence also the week before classes so it kind of makes sense why you would not hear anything maybe the professor's just busy preparing and just doesn't have time to lay out everything in the beginning and that is okay first week of classes rolls around the courses online that were closed are now open and we can get to start working on the material and doing the homework assignments that we need to yada 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 halfway through the week computer networks is still not open so i'm thinking okay this is weird it's about half a week in and we haven't heard anything so i shoot the professor an email i was like hello professor can you please open the class and i heard nothing <laughs> which okay and then magically the course opened but do you want to know what was on the course page nothing 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 literally nothing um it was literally just an empty course page and i scoured it there was literally nothing so i was like okay so then i send out another email because i have to like get the professors to sign paperwork and everything every single semester um so i shoot them an email just like with the rundown of like all the accommodations i get blah 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 nothing which okay most of the other professors that i sent an email for like with that i heard nothing friday rolls around it's still the beginning of week one at this point i'm really concerned um actually it was thursday thursday so i was like i still haven't heard from this professor and i've emailed him twice okay so i talked to my academic advisor and i'm just like hey so we haven't heard anything from this professor and it's been like halfway through week one you know and i do get like kind of why the class could not be opened yet because you know, we're living in the age of coronavirus so maybe he's just taking a while to learn the new system of canvas because my university just recently transitioned to canvas over the summer which is great so we're dealing with canvas which is a brand new software platform that not everyone is used to using and we're dealing with coronavirus so it's just 
it's just not great at all. But at the same time, I would kind of expect to get an email that was like, hey guys, I'm struggling, like, just bear with me. The advisor's just like, calm down. Um, the advisor also knows me and knows that I'm a stressed out person in general. He's just like, calm down. I know you're concerned about this, but don't worry. Like, it's going to get worked out. But at the same time, let me know on Friday if you still don't hear anything. Friday comes. Friday leaves. A couple things changes. I go up to open the course and there is a syllabus. And I was reading through the syllabus. And I'm just like, okay, I'm glad that the syllabus is on this class. And also there are eight files attached to the files. I go to open one and it's an introductory slide, which is okay, but it was very clearly ripped off somewhere else on the internet or they were like the slide deck that accompanied the textbook. I don't know. So I saw the textbook that we had to get a textbook and I was like, you know what? Before rushing out and buying this textbook, I'm just going to wait to actually hear from the professor about all this because at this point, you know, it's the end of week one, things feel weird. So, none of you guys probably want to like listen to this, but I just want to talk about it. So you're going to talk about it, hear about it. And I was just kind of like, okay, um, I'm not going to start tackling those until I get a little bit more instructions about what I need to be doing with those. At this point, I still did not know whether the class was going to be taught synchronously or asynchronously. The weekend passes, we hear nothing. Monday rolls around. I shoot my advisor another email saying like, hey, um, things haven't really like changed. Monday morning, I also sent my professor a third email asking, is this class gonna be taught synchronously or asynchronously? So I, give my professor a couple of hours to respond to me and at the end of the day i email my advisor and i'm just like look here's the situation he's not been emailing he's not been communicating with us these are the things that have been uplate, updated with the slides but still no communication he responds to me he's like mm, i can definitely see like why this is very concerning and he said you know don't worry whatever happens you as a you as a student will not be punished for whatever is happening with the professor and i was like okay that that is comforting to know because i have that in writing now uh, which is why it's very important to email your professors people get shit in writing but i'm also mildly concerned because and i don't really want to have to make up this class if an issue goes wrong and we have to like move the class to a different semester. I don't wanna to have to sacrifice a different class to take this class or have to take it over the summer. I personally would feel punished if I have to take it at a different time and have to pay for that because I'm paying for it right now. Um, this is part of my tuition. But if I have to take it at a different time, like in the spring when I'm not supposed to be paying the full-time tuition and I have to pay $4,000 for a class because of the university's incompetency would feel like a punishment for me. Second week rolls by. We get one two-sentence message from the professor. It was like Friday of the second week. The sentence reads, all the slides are in modules and I'm working on getting the videos up. I made that a compound sentence but it was Two, two different sentences. This is the, your fir, our first, this entire student populations of the computer science majors. First communication with this professor and there's no acknowledgement for the fact that he has been AWOL for basically two weeks. It gets to the end of third week and we're just mildly concerned because it's been three out of 15 weeks and we've received no instruction on how to be doing this class end of the third week we are informed that the professor is no longer going to be our professor and we are going to get this new baby-faced professor the only reason i get this new professor baby-faced is because it was made very clear to us that he um he's qualified for the position but has like taught this class 
like once before. So this situation can go one of two ways. We either have to work our asses off collectively to make up for at this three weeks worth of classes where we've just done nothing. The other option is that the professor just kind of shrugs and is like, we'll get what we can get done, but we don't know what we can get done in like 12 weeks. So then we get an email over the weekend from this new baby face professor saying, hey, meeting Monday, we are going to talk about this. And I was like, well, I'm going to this meeting because I want to hear what's going down. This is my grade. This is my money that I've been paying to go to this university. I want to know what the fuck is going on because it's been stressing me out for the past two, three weeks. I'm filming this on Wednesday of the fourth week of classes. So that Monday meeting, I think went fairly well. I think the professor is a little bit overwhelmed because he was just handed like 90 students who've learned nothing about computer networks, have received no instructions on how to proceed with the computer network class. And he basically has to design the whole thing from scratch because he has to condense 15 weeks of material into 12 weeks, which if we're generous, it's more like 11 weeks because he was literally put onto this class the weekend before the fourth week. So literally like four days ago. And I cannot imagine like the level of stress that would put him under. I've been put in similar situations and it's stress inducing. We're gonna see how it goes. He says that all of the homeworks and tests are going to be numeric, whatever that means. I hope that means that makes it easier for us and for him to grade because there's gonna be a right answer or there's gonna be a wrong answer. And I don't know. He said in the meeting that he wants us to do the final like in person and someone said yeah no you can't do that like our university will not let us do that because we all have to go home after thanksgiving if i haven't checked but i think he's posted one video that's like an introductory video and no assignments yet so i'll see how that goes let me know what you think of all the textbooks that i had to get i didn't do like a running tally i think like Roughly, it was about like $500 that I'd spend this month on textbooks. Oh, also, this new professor, I asked him straight up about the textbook. I was like, so, there's a textbook on this syllabus. Do we have to fucking buy it? And didn't say use those words exactly. And the professor was just like, I don't really know. I'm going to say no because I don't really know what that textbook is. Anyway. That's my rant-ish video for this week. Hope you guys liked it. Leave a comment in the below. Let me know any of your horror stories from university. If you want me to make a follow-up video to like this rant end thing, I'll let you know. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. I hope if you're in university, it's going way better or school in general than it is kind of going for me. All right, bye. Oh, no, 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 no. It's for an anthropology class.